here to tell you about my new favorite foundation, a superhero foundation, if you will. I like that phrasing better than holy grail. That's just my new thing, superhero. And I've been wearing it for a couple of months, but it wasn't available for sale until towards the end of January. It is in stores now. It is not available in Sephora just yet. Not sure why, but you can find it at Nordstrom, Dillard's, uh, Saks. I'll link below all the places, but in case you have no idea what I'm talking about, I've been mentioning for a while now. It is the new foundation from Shiseido. It's the Shiseido Synchro Skin Glow. Looks like this. Here's the bottle. Here is the pretty box. And I want to tell you all about it and then we'll get into how it applies and we'll do some check-ins so you can see how it wears. So, this, and I took notes. So, the Shiseido Synchro Skin Glow is slightly different than their very famous Synchro Skin in that it is supposed to have a luminous finish. It is um, dewy yet not supposed to give you shine. So just in case you don't know, I do have technically dry skin, not dehydrated, but dry skin. It doesn't flake or anything, but I do not get oily or shiny throughout the day. Um, you get one ounce in this bottle. It retails for $45. There are 13 shades available and they have broken it down into three categories. You can either get the shades in golden shades. They usually have shades one through five, but they're not all shades are available in every section. So there's golden, which is for the more yellow undertone, neutral, which is self-explanatory, and the rose shades, which are more pink undertone. For some reason, I think rose starts at number two and I believe golden may as well, but neutral is one through five. For whatever reason, that ends up to be 13 shades in most places. A couple of retailers only have 12 shades. I don't know. I only have three of the shades to show you. I wear neutral two currently, and they also sent me um, rose two to try. And having it's a little too pink and a little too dark for me, but I will show you that in swatches. So according to all the information on Shiseido's website, the Synchro Skin Glow doesn't just give you that glowy finish to your skin. It's supposed to actually have hydrating properties. So in the actual foundation, it has now these are listed, the ingredients listed towards the bottom of the, of the ingredients list, so in very small amounts, but it has argan oil, cranberry seed oil, yuzu seed, I had to read this, yuzu seed extract, and wild thyme, which is supposed to be an antioxidant. I don't know that my skin looks any different from using it. I don't really know what any of these things, act, other than the argan oil, I'm not entirely sure what skin benefits any of those things have. Whatever, that is not why I choose a foundation. What I am looking for in a foundation specifically is a medium finish that it wears throughout the day, I don't have to retouch it, that it gives me sort of a dewy satin finish, um, that it matches my skin tone. It doesn't smell weird, that's pretty much what I'm looking for. It doesn't get cakey, you know, pretty much what we all want, I think, in a foundation. So. Let me talk about how I put it on. My preference for applying foundation is with a brush. I do like a flat top kabuki style brush. And as you can see here, I'm applying it to one side of the face. It's um, the right side of the screen for you, but my left side of the face, I'm using an It Cosmetics brush to put this all on. Uh, one pump does cover my whole face, but I like to build it with two pumps. Any more than that, and it definitely does get cakey. It says this is a buildable coverage. I would say buildable with limits. Um, I don't really think you can easily build this to a full coverage without it looking very heavy on the face. Now on the other side, I did use a foundation blending sponge from my uh, friend's company. So uh, I'll put her website below uh, if you wanna check it out. I really did, and I never use, I don't say, I shouldn't say never, I rarely use a blending sponge to put on my foundation, but um, I was pleasantly surprised how easy this blended. And after I finished doing my foundation and went on to put on the rest of my makeup, I used this to blend in my under eye concealer and it blended so easily. I don't know why I've been using a brush to do that. I will be using a blending sponge from now on. But anyway, I digress. So on the uh, left side of the uh, screen, but my right side of the face, I used a beauty blender type sponge just to show you the coverage obviously is not as full when you're using a damp sponge as when you're using the brush but both apply evenly and well i don't like using my fingers so i didn't test it using my fingers because i would never use my fingers to apply a foundation maybe a bb cream or a cc cream but not a foundation i do i to be fair i have two blemishes on my jawline that i decided to pick out right before filming so you do see that there 
Um, this definitely evens out skin tone. Um, it covers some minor imperfections, but it's not gonna blank out your face. You do need concealer to uh, cover any real blemishes. And that's what I think a foundation should be for anyway. I don't wanna be wearing a mask. I would prefer to pinpoint conceal where I need it instead of just having a blank canvas on my face. That looks a little bizarre. Um, so that is generally what you're getting with the foundation. I will say it does say printed at the very top of the back of the bottle, shake well before use. So um, we all joke about shaking up our foundation before we use it, but you should shake this one up. It's very lightweight. Once it's blended into the skin, it feels like I'm wearing nothing. It's not as liquidy as some of these water-based foundations appear to be that just run down your hand. But just for demonstration purposes, let's shake it up. I should mention it has a pump. Um, it's, it's slowly running down the back of my hand, but it's not just like water where it's just right off the back. The cons so far, other than like I mentioned, it's not as buildable as I think they would lead you to believe. I really don't love the cap. I know I'm being very picky, but it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle. It's a glass bottle and it's not a perfectly round or perfectly oval type uh, bottle. I don't know if you can see it, but it has a little bump out here and it has a little bump down here. And so you, when you're putting the cap on, you have to make sure it lines up just so or it doesn't click on right. I know it's a very petty small detail, but like when you're just in a rush and you're putting your makeup on in the morning, like who has time to make sure the cap's on just right? Like. It won't go on this way. Yeah, you hear that click. So there's that. And then the top, the inside gets all dirty with the whatever. I don't personally care, but I know some people are very anal about how their makeup looks on the vanity. That doesn't bother me. But I do love this foundation. I definitely think this has replaced, um, it comes very close, I should say. It comes very close in my book to the original Guerlain Lingerie de Peau. Not quite as heavy coverage, much less expensive. It's almost $20 less a bottle, so that's all. That's good. And uh, I don't know if it wears quite so long. So let's leave. I will go about doing my thing today, check in at the, like say five hour mark and at the end of the day, and we'll see how this all panned out. All right guys, so I skipped the middle check-in. We are here 10 hours later. Now it's pretty late. So lighting's not great, but my, my ring light thing that I never use apparently dies if you don't use it. So um, I'm kind of working with some um, rigged up lighting here, but uh, 10 hours in, it's worn off a little here because I've been picking at this little blemish and it is definitely rubbed off a little bit, a little bit here where I hold my phone. But I'm just looking to like, this is not a plug for milk, makeup. They just sent me a really cool mirror. Um, a little worn off on the chin, like a tad, but I haven't repowdered. I haven't, I haven't even touched up my lipstick, by the way, this lipstick that I had on in the beginning in the, in the, when I first filmed this, I have had lunch. I've had dinner. I've had water. It's not a hundred percent there, but it's still there. It's amazing. But this isn't about the wet and wild liquid lipstick. So that this is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Glow Foundation. I will insert a actual picture of my face, a little more close up, but I can tell you after 10 hours of wear, um, given the fact that I've been on the phone for about an hour, two hours this afternoon with the, just leaning on the phone and I, you know, I'm very expressive. So I've got lots of wrinkles going on. It has not settled into these wrinkles. It has not gathered in the lines here. Um, I still, I think look, I think my makeup looks pretty decent considering it's been on for like 10 hours and I've literally, I've rubbed at my eyes, I've been fussing with my hair, rubbing my nose, it's allergy season. I love this foundation. I think it's wonderful. I think the shade range is great. I think the price point is lovely. Um, you know, I don't love the packaging. I don't love that the jar is weird shaped and the lid has to go on just so. Um, that's pretty, I, I wish it were just a little, a little, like smidge more full coverage in one swipe. But again, it's a little bit buildable. I forgot to also mention, I did try it over a primer. It does not do well over primers, just straight on top of 
um, moisturized skin that's had a second for the moisturizer to sink in, but I've tried it over a spray-on primer. Um, was it the Scandinavia spray primer? And I've tried it with, um, can't remember which other primer it was, but like an actual, you know, cream one. It doesn't do well over primers. Uh, it gets patchy. And I should say that this was without any setting spray at all. If I did a setting spray and I just go back and forth between the Urban Decay one, the NYX one, uh, the Wet n Wild one, I just, it does to me, I can't really notice a discernible difference. Um, it holds up even longer. So there you go. That is my pretty quick review, I hope, on the new Shiseido Sinker Skin Glow Foundation. I'm a big fan. Let me know if you've tried it and, um, and if you like it as much as I do. Let me know if there's another foundation that you want me to test. I did pick up two sample sizes of the new Giorgio Armani, um, is it the Power Foundation, Power Suit Foundation? I'm gonna give that a run for its money. But um, let me know if there's other drugstore or high end that you want me to test and I will do that for you as well. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.